Cube. News and analysis from Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors Actian, Accelerating Big Data 2.0, and WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our wrap up of the Big Data SV, Big Data Silicon Valley Innovation Hour event, Silicon Angles, the Cubes. Big Data event in Silicon Valley. This is a, an augmentation to our Big Data New York City event, hashtag Big Data NYC, and this is hashtag Big Data SV. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, and I'm excited to say we had a great event, over 44 interviews here on theCUBE over, over two and a half days. We talked to a lot of people. We had a party, all of our community, all the CUBE alumni and their friends came last night. Great event. Everything's happening here. Great, great show from a new standpoint at Strata Conference. A lot of buzz, sold out the whole show. Um, a lot of activity. I'm joined with Jeff Kelly, uh, Chief Analyst for Big Data at Wikibon, and Jeff Frick, GM of our Cube business. Jeff, uh, Cube was success again. Cube was a success. Um, this is our second show that we've done ourselves to, to go out and do our own Big Data SV, and we're really excited with the response of the community, really excited about the interviews that we had and some of the insight that we saw. Uh, it takes a lot of people to put a big show on like this, and, and it's really a nice thing when we pull it off and it works, and, and I think uh, we got some good info. Yeah, and, and I think people, you know, get, get to know the Cube. It's our fifth year, we have a lot of Cube alumni. Now, it's like, hey, Cube alumni, this is getting kind of played, right? We've interviewed over, over 3,300 people almost in, over the life of the Cube, and uh, we like to stream the data. We are about providing the data unfiltered, extracting the signal from the noise. We love it, talking to smart people, extracting the knowledge and sharing it with you. That's our mission. We're looking forward to continuing to do that. We want to thank our underwriters who, who got us here. Thank you very much. If you're interested in sponsoring more of the Cube so it gets bigger and better, we're happy to talk. Talk to Jeff about that. But getting back to the data and extracting the signal from the noise, Jeff Kelly gave a, a big pre presentation keynote at Strata today, presenting his uh, data on the market study survey sizing. Jeff, uh, your take on, on the feedback and the data that you're getting from the field. Well, I think a few, few takeaways I had from, from this week. Number one, I think it's great that the conversation is moving away from the technology and more to the business value of uh, what the technology enables. Um, so that's a good sign for the market. Uh, it's a good sign for all these vendors out here, and it's a good sign you know, really for um, enterprises who can now actually uh, look to some of these providers to actually deliver value and not just a set of technologies and essentially more work. You've got to integrate them and uh, get things running inside your organization. Um, you know, some other things uh, that I thought were really interesting was, you know, again, the business focus and talking more to business people rather than just IT. Um, we, we had Cloudera on talking about their enterprise data hub strategy and how it really enables them to shorten that conversation about the tech and the guts of the technology. Um, so they're not talking so much about Hadoop and Flume and Scoop, they're talking about business value to a business person. And, and that's really the kind of uh, up-level conversation that's going to uh, move this market forward. Um, a few other things, and I think the partnerships that were announced, um, we're going to see more of that this year. I think that's critical, again, to uh, getting big data into the enterprise. Uh, we saw MapR and HP Vertica with a big announcement. Uh, of course, another big one was Hortonworks and Red Hat. So you're going to continue to see that this year, I think, rather than some of those big product announcements. Because now, a lot of the technology is kind of um, just starting to, to, to solidify around Hadoop and some of the other things that you can do with it thanks to Yarn and uh, some of the other innovations we saw last year. And now it's about implementing it, making it real in the enterprise. So we're starting to see some settlement of, of people finding their swim lanes, as we say, um, amongst the, the, the players. And obviously, you know, this industry would not be possible without all the great work at Cloudera when they first started. They were the first company in. Amar Awadala, Jeff Hammerbacher, Mike Olson, uh, Christoph Basili, that we be data. Those guys, they started the movement. And the folks at Yahoo then spun out for Hortonworks. That was a seminal moment. I think when history is written, I think they're going to look back and forget about all the little mud fights going on in the open source, and they're going to look at those guys and saying, "That's really what it's all about." And you know, when I talked to Mike Olson about this, and you know, they have a mission, and from day one they've had a mission, and then and then the Yahoo guys became Hortonworks again. The mission of, of Hadoop is the real deal. That's the big story here, that it's a done deal. And the open source community continues to evolve. And you know, storage, compute, algorithms, the tools, the decision tools are all becoming open source. And open source is now the core 
lever for this massive innovation and change. So you know, that's a big story, and I think at the end of the day, competition will still happen, and it's good to see that, but they're settling into their groove. I mean, you see Cloudera, I mean, what's your take on, on those swim lanes? Well, yeah, I mean, if you're talking about Hadoop specifically, um, I agree with you. I think uh, all three of the uh, kind of the pure play Hadoop vendors, Cloudera, Hortonworks, and MapR, are kind of finding their identities. Um, Cloudera specifically really, um, I think, has uh, had a really interesting last six months or so with their introduction of the Enterprise Data Hub and really focusing on, or not worrying so much about whether they're proprietary or open source, focusing on what they do well, the strengths that they have, and really simplifying the message, simplifying the pricing, making it easier for their customers to understand what they do and how best to engage with them. Um, so great job by Cloudera. They're set for a really big year if they can execute. Um, and by all accounts, you know, they are, they're ready to do that. You know, from Hortonworks, they haven't wavered from day one. You know, they're open source. Uh, they're going to leverage the community. They're going to leverage partnerships to get out into the, into the enterprise and really uh, get to scale. So they've done that last year with uh, partnerships with Teradata, with Microsoft, SAP, and others. This year is about, again, for them, it's also about execution, executing those reseller arrangements, getting the Teradata Salesforce out there, reselling Hortonworks, same with the SAP Salesforce, et cetera. So they're also primed for a big year if that, can, if that uh, pans out the way they expect. And MapR, you know, MapR, give them a lot of credit. They, uh, they're not ideologues. They focus on solving real problems for real customers today, whether that's open source, proprietary, some combination. Um, you know, they support uh, open source projects, but they're also, they're not shy of kind of injecting their own IP when they think that's going to help customers. Um, you know, they had that great partnership announcement to, with HP Vertica. So, you know, I think all three of them are finding their way. There's still going to be plenty of squabbles this year. There's competition. There's going to be plenty of uh, back and forth banter, but I think you're right. They're, they're kind of finding their, their own groove, and um, there's a lot of, uh, this, this is a big market as we've, as we've sized. There's room for everybody. Okay, well, I took some notes down throughout the interviews, and I want to share with you my summary of kind of what happened here in the moment in time of big data, Silicon Valley, or big data SV. Obviously, I mentioned storage, compute, algorithms, and tools are all the key. Hadoop has, as a platform is viable. Analytics continues to be the holy grail application. And everything else around is kind of filling in. You're starting to see the swim lanes from the vendors, as Jeff was pointed out. I think the real focus I heard here was the next, the next step is the ecosystem. You start people talking about their ecosystems, and that's a normal conversation around evolution around platforms. Uh, outside of that, the key uh, highlights from a topic standpoint um, is the business focus is number one, and it's greater than a POC, and it's, we're seeing no real discussions around POCs. They're talking about budget, so the business conversation is not a bad thing. Um, you know, in Silicon Valley, people don't have those conversations normally, but right now, if you're not talking about business outcomes and business model value, then you are irrelevant, and that is clearly coming through this show, and entrepreneurs and companies out there who have high valuations or high hopes, if you don't have that business conversation dialogue, you will be left out in the cold. So that's very clear from the show here. Uh, two, data science continues to evolve and be a very hot topic. Um, the notion of scale has been checked. That's kind of behind us. Hadoop, check behind us. The key conversations around data science is discovery, adaptive data, insights for the data, decision tooling, making it easier. And, and, and to extend to that as a whole new category topic I'm going to put down is the interface problems around data, whether it's a mobile app or graphs or making it simplifying. The interface problem is really a big deal. Joe Hellerstein kind of highlighted that when, in our conversation with that, and that's, that's key. And then, you know, fourth, open source continues to dominate and will not stop, in my opinion. It's, it's really changing the computer science equation, both from how computer science is being done and then the effects of the disruption. And then finally, the uh, past, the yarn, the in-memory, these are topics that are gaining big steam. What is a platform as a service for big data? Yarn has got a lot of traction. In-memory with Spark is clearing the runway, and that's going to continue to change the, the, the data workflows and, and how this integrates into the business platforms, which converts into IT, et cetera. And finally, my, my honorable mention topic um, is always going to be emerging out, and that's Internet of Things. Internet of Things is front and center. That's going to be a big part of the, the conversation this year on top of those topics. So in, in summary, I've had to kind of boil up the topics. Business, data science, interface problem, open source dominating, pass yarn in memory, um, data workflows, and Internet of Things. So to me, Jeff, that is my take on, on what's happening. And uh, it's great news for everyone. The growth is there. Couldn't agree more. I mean, you said it well. Uh, it's it's up-leveled the conversation, talking about open source, data science, 
really moving towards that value conversation, which is really where that's when you know the market's starting to, to really become mature. Yeah, and I think looking down the road a little bit further, I think uh, Joe also said Hellerstein, who was one of our last guests, you know, what happens to the way you think about problems when storage and compute power is basically infinite and free, which it's not there yet, but it's, you know, the old uh, economics curve, it's absolutely approaching that line. And so how do you readdress your problems? How do you think of the way you attack your problems in this kind of new world? And we're very quickly headed that way. We were at the uh, open compute, um, forum with now open source is getting into the hardware side of the business, which is a whole nother disruption that, that we're going to soon see. All the ARM chips going into that piece, kind of disrupting the x86 dominance, which has been um, locked in for such a long time. I think that's the other one. And what he also said, he was a great guest professor at Berkeley, so he's a little bit uh, further thinking down the road, is there's a whole new rash of opportunities that are coming because of this way to, uh, to look at data. Jeff, I want to ask you, uh, you were out um, managing the front and making sure everyone's coming in. Our team here did a great job. Uh, props to the whole CUBE team. But I want to ask you a question. You know, you, you know, with the party last night, we saw the community of the CUBE kind of coming together for the second time. Um, what were some of the things that you've heard from folks? You uh, had a lot of chances to, to prep the guests. You were scheduling, you were interfacing with all the, the party folks. Um, what's the vibe of the Cube? What's the, we're sitting behind the desk all day. Right. What was happening out there? The, I think the vibe is positive. You know, I just talk, was talking to Pauline before she came in and she said, you know, how do you like doing your own events? Is that, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And I told her, you know, it's, it's really a good thing. It's a new challenge for us, but it's an opportunity to bring our community together in a unique way. And, and we're seeing, uh, as you said, I think at the party, there's a lot of biz dev going on, people know each other, and, and it is a small community um, of people that are changing the world in big data and cloud. And I think we're really fortunate to, to be able to participate and get the tech athletes, as we love to call them, on to tell the stories because you know, we had big companies here this week, and we had small companies, we had new partnerships, and we had emerging uh, people coming out of nowhere. So it, it's in a really exciting time to be in the tech space. We're really excited to be able to go out to these events and bring the, the folks to you and the audience to hear from them and see what's going on. It's, uh, I've been through a bunch of booms and busts in the valley since back in uh, the not early 90s, and, and this one, feels like a great boom, but what's different is it's based on real business value, and we hear repeatedly time and time again that in these really large scale operations, if you can eke out s small percentages of deltas, the impact is enormous because you're talking about a big numerator. So it, it's exciting, I think people, people are excited to be here, and um, I think Big Data NYC in, in the fall is going to be another great show. Well, we love, we love talking to the tech athletes, and I think that's the key thing about the, you know, the party highlights for us is that you know, we've interviewed a lot of people, a lot of people watch. We had over 100,000 live views on just on the live stream. So uh, again, the interest is there. Uh, we're happy to bring it to you. And you know what? We love doing it, and the social relationships that come out of the, the data that we're streaming, the raw materials, unfiltered. And I think the beautiful thing about this new social media world that we're living in is, is that the value of the data in context to being unfiltered, a lot of people make up their own mind, and we're proud to do that. We would not be able to do it without the sponsors. So Jeff, share with the folks out there, uh, some of the, the, the folks who helped underwrite our independent data streaming operation. Yeah, again, thank you very much. So it's Actian and Wendisco as our featured sponsors. Uh, thanks a lot for coming in and, and, and supporting Big Data SV. We had Alteryx, Cloudera, Info Objects, uh, MapR, who's a great sponsor of theCUBE, SyncSort, HP Vertica, we did the HP Vertica data show last year, Traseda, and Squirrel. So again, thank you so much to, uh, to all those companies for underwriting us. If you stop by theCUBE, if you're able to make it by the Yosemite room where you've seen us on the road, you see we've got a lot of people, a lot of gear. We can't do this without uh, underwriters helping us out, and so big shout out to them. Also, why I've got uh, a minute, just big thanks to the guys that you don't see behind the lights uh, here in the studio, Mark and Matt, Alex, Andrew, Greg, and Mick, who are working hard. They're up early, they're up late, they're working over at the board. And of course, a big shout out to our Daves, who aren't with us here. Dave Vellante had to go back early. Um, and then Dave Butler, who keeps us all on track back in uh, yeah, and Kristen back in Nicole, Boston. and then Kristen Nicole at the blog, getting all the blog posts out there. We want to put as much content as possible at siliconangle.com. Look, go to wikibon.org for all the free research, all the free content. We're glad to bring it to you. And and you know what? I had people come to me last night and said, I want to say, have hashtag Big Data Chicago. And so <laughs> we'll we definitely go. be in New York. So Big Data NYC and Silicon Valley will continue to do this. Um, but you know, we might bring it on the road. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of interest. Uh, if you want to help us there, just let us know. Contact Jeff 
or if you want to have talk to the cube, we're happy to do uh, your events. Again, we want to go where the action is, and, and we will go wherever it takes to find the signal from the noise. That's our, our mission. This is the cube. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is a wrap for Big Data SV. We'll see you on our next cube show.